Okay, so we're moving on to unit five, which is solving inequalities, right? And solving inequalities is done exactly the same as solving equations. So if you were good at solving equations back in unit two, uh, you're going you're gonna to think that this is the easiest uh, unit in, in all of algebra one if you're good at solving equations. So on the board, we have our su success criteria and our uh, learning target, our goal. Uh, what do we want to do uh, by the end of this unit? We want to be able to solve and graph any inequality. Um, so what do we need to be able to do to solve and graph any inequality? The first thing for sure is you need to know how to solve equations. Again, like I said, from unit two. Uh, if you did poorly on unit two, it's a great idea to go back and do the unit two practice test and retake that unit two test that way and do that as soon as possible. I'm talking maybe today or tomorrow. That way uh, you'll have the skills that you need to solve inequalities today. And the other thing that you need to know is you need to understand that if you multiply or divide by a negative, a negative number on your last step when you're solving an inequality, you must change the inequality symbol. I underline it. That's what we need to memorize. And you'll see that applied in today's lesson. Anyway, getting that out of the way. Uh, here's our title. We're doing two sections in one. And we need to remember what this is. What is this symbol? What does that mean? Greater than. What does that mean? Less than. Greater than or equal to. Less than or equal to. Nice and simple, right? So if I were to compare two numbers like 4 and 5, what symbol belongs between the 4 and the 5? Less than symbol. Pretty simple, right? Uh, in case you forgot which one's less than, which one's greater than, uh, you could think of like a, a hungry alligator or something, right? It wants to eat the bigger value. So obviously it's going to open up to the 5, right? Now let's say we had something like a, an 8 and a 3. Well, then in that case, it wants to eat the 8 because the 8's bigger than the 3. So it would open up to the 8. So again, very uh, basic skills that we already should know. If you don't, hopefully uh, now you know, right? So what if I were to uh, compare, it gets a little bit more tricky when you compare, compare something like negative two compared with negative three. Which one should it open up to? To the negative three? Remember the, the alligator is hungry, it wants to eat the bigger value. So the question is which one's bigger? Now, if you totally forgot how to tell which one's bigger, whether negative two is bigger or negative three is bigger, um, I mentioned this before, on a number line, anything on the left side will be less than, okay? Anything on the right side, you guys remember that, will be greater. So if you compare like three and five, which one's bigger? Five, five's bigger, why? Because it's on the right side. Uh, three is less. Why? Because three is on the left side and left means less. Anything on the left side means less. Anything on the right side means greater. So when I compare negative two with negative three, when I compare the negative two right here and the negative three there, which one is on the right side? Which one's greater? The negative two is greater, right? Does that make sense? So it has to open up to the greater value to the negative two, okay? So it's going to open up to the negative two. And there's your correct inequality between those two numbers. Now, I know a lot of us are like, dude, I already know this. I'm bored. All right, don't write it down. It's fine. But if you're like, wait a minute, I forgot about this, then for sure, write it down. The inequality has to open up to the greater value. And how do you know which one's greater? On the number line, whatever's on the right side is greater. Whatever's on the left side is less. Okay. So if I were to compare, let's say, uh, let me get this out of the way. If I were to like, if I were to ask you compare negative eighty-eight compared with uh, negative one hundred, which one should it open up to? Which one is greater? If you think about the number line, the negative eighty-eight is on the right side, and the negative one hundred is on the left side, right? If you think about the number line, so over here you have like zero, one, two, and yeah, as you, if you're going this way, it's greater. So anything that's on the right side is greater. So negative 88 is going to be about here, and negative 100 is going to be over here. So obviously, when you compare this guy and that guy, negative 88 is greater because it's on the right side. So it has to open up to the negative 88. Okay, basic skills. Now let's move on to something uh, more fun. Now, you don't have to copy all this down, especially if you already know it. Um, if you are totally lost, then you probably want to copy this down. But how about this? On your notebook right now, just copy down this. Graph 3 is greater than x. Write that down. Graph 3 is greater than x. And you know what? Instead of this number line that's already done for us, let's just move that out of the way. 
and we're gonna draw our own number line. Since you guys don't have the number line, I'm gonna draw my own, you're gonna draw your own. And we are talking about the number three. So whatever number you're talking about, you wanna put that number pretty much in the middle and then fill in a couple of values to the right side, which have to be greater values like four and five, and a couple of values to the left side, which have to be less than three, which is like two and one. Make sense? Okay. Now, how do we graph this inequality? Well, it says right here, when graphing a single variable inequality on a number line, make sure the variable is on the left side. You see, right here, when you read this, the X is not on the left side. Right here, it says three is greater than X. And I don't want to talk about three. I want to talk about X. So I don't want three is greater than X. I want X on this side and three on this side. And if it was originally opening up to the three, it has to continue to open up to the three. So three is greater than X is really the same thing as X is less than three, but it's better to write it this way because X is on the left side. And now you're actually talking about X, not about three. The other option would be to read it backwards. This says X, it's opening up to the three. That means that X is less than three, reading it backwards. But if you write it the right way, X is less than three. I hope everybody understands uh, what I did here. All I did was take this inequality and flip the entire thing. I took the three, put it over there, took the X, put it over here, and that caused that to also flip. So any questions on that? No? So first thing to do, make sure the variable's on the left side. Okay, now the variable's on the left side. Number two, if the inequality has a solid line underneath it, it will be a solid dot. Okay, do we have a solid line underneath the inequality? No, there is no solid line, so the dot is not going to be solid. So everybody go to three, put an open dot right there, and do not fill it in. It has to be an open dot at three, okay? And then the last one, if it's a less than symbol, it goes to the left, because less than is left, greater than is right. Okay, so this is X is less than three. So less than is to the left. And we have graphed three is greater than X, but it's better to write it X is less than three. Open dot at three to the left. So if you have a solid line underneath it, it'll be a solid dot, you fill it in. If it doesn't have a solid line underneath it, it's gonna be an open dot. Now let's make you make sure that you really understand this. So. Like, again, this says X is less than three. Could X be zero? Yes or no? Could X be zero? Yes, because zero is less than three. Could X be negative 50? Yes, because negative 50 is less than three. Could X be two? Yes, because two is less than three. Could X be 2.5? Yes. Could it be 2.9? Yes. Could it be 2.99999? Yes. Could it be three? No, because three is not less than three. Does that make sense? Yeah, three is equal to three. So I would have to have an or equal to in order to be able to include three. So since I cannot include three, that's why it's an open dot. Like what this open dot means is that it could get a super close to three, <clears throat> but it can't actually be three. Because if it's actually three, you would need an or equal to. And that's why if you have an or equal to, it becomes a solid dot, not an open dot. You get it? Yay? Okay, let's move on. I want you guys to copy these four inequalities down and graph them on a number line, okay? So we have uh, X is greater than five, X is less than or equal to negative two, X is greater than or equal to negative eight, and four is greater than X, so you'd have to switch that one. But anyway, on each one of these, I would like you to, first of all, write it down and then do a, a number line. And once again, you put the number that you're talking about right in the middle. So in this case, what number am I gonna put right here in the middle? the first one, a five, right? And if you put a couple to the right, that means they have to be greater values. So what's greater than five? Six and seven, okay? A couple values less than five, which would be what? Four and three. And then from there, you ask yourself, is this value at five, is it gonna be a solid dot or an open dot? It's gonna be open. Why open? Because it does not have a solid line underneath the inequality. So you can't actually include five. And then from this open dot, do I go to the left or do I go to the right? Come on, people. You go to the right because it says greater than. So you're going to go to the right. So you just go that way and you're good to go. All right. So I'm going to pause it right here. I want you guys to do two, three, and four. And uh, 
I'll unpause it and explain it. So what, what should I, okay, so when I draw my, my number line for number two, what number am I going to put in the middle? Negative two, that's right. Thank you. And let's do a couple of values that are greater than negative two. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be a negative one and zero. Okay. And a couple of values that are uh, less than negative two, negative three and negative four. That's good. Okay. Now, is this going to represent an open dot at negative two or a solid dot at negative two? Solid dot, because if it has a solid line, it's going to be a solid dot. Thank you so much. So everybody draw that solid dot. And then are you going to the left or to the right, depending on this inequality? To the left, because that's a less than symbol. X is less than or equal to negative 2. Less than is to the left. So we're just going to simply draw it to the left. You will have some questions like this on the next quiz this Friday, and they're also going to be on the test next Friday. Easy stuff. It's like three points. Uh, how about this next one? Um, that blue inequality, x is greater than or equal to negative 8. I'm going to put the negative 8 right in the middle. And then I'm going to put a greater value to the right. And remember, the positive numbers are over here. So I have to get to 0 before getting to the positive numbers. That means that this is a negative 7. And over here on this side, that means that that's a negative 9. Okay, And you could fill in more values, but just with those two values, it's good enough. I know that you understand it just by doing that number line. And this is going to be a solid dot because it does have a solid line underneath that inequality. So you're going to put a solid dot at negative 8. And this is saying greater than or equal to negative 8. So greater than is to the right. So you go that way. Okay. Now this last one is a little tricky because, again, you need to make sure that the x is on the left side and the 4 is on the right side. Uh, that way it's easier to graph. So yes, we are talking about the number 4, and something greater than 4 to go on the right side would be 5, and something less than 4 to go on the left side would be 3. And we do know that this is going to be an open dot. If it had a solid line, I would make it a solid dot, but it doesn't have a solid line, so it's not a solid dot. And now we either need to go to the left or to the right. Now it's kind of hard right here unless you read it backwards. This says 4 is greater than x, but you want to talk about x, not 4. So read it backwards. x is less than 4. So it's better to actually just flip the whole thing, put the x on this side, the 4 on that side. If it opened up to the 4 originally, it has to continue opening up to the 4 when you rewrite it. So you're technically picking up this whole thing and flipping it all around. That way you could have the x on this side. Now it makes more sense. x is less than 4. Less than is to the left. Okay, these are easy points that you're going to see on the quiz this Friday, easy points on the next test next week. So please make sure you understand this. Let's move on. So finally, we move on to solving, not just graphing. Now we're going to solve and then graph the answer once we have the answer. So um, I want everybody to jot this down in their notebooks. Uh, solving an inequality, how do you solve an inequality? You solve it the same way you solved an equation, right? Um, to solve an equation, you got to first make sure that the equation is simplified. So you first make sure that the inequality is simplified. And if you look at this inequality, there is no distributed property. There is no combining like terms. This is what we call a simplified inequality. And then you got to go uh, and get your x by itself on one side of the equal sign, but in this case, on one side of the inequality. So you want to get x by itself. You don't want the 2. You don't want the 5. And you solve it the same way you did before when you solved an equation. So if you wanted to get x by itself, you would get rid of the 5 by subtracting 5 and then subtracting 5 and then dividing by 2 and then dividing by 2. That's how we're going to solve this one. The only difference between an equation and an inequality is written right here in red. So please read this carefully, understand it, and memorize it. If you multiply or divide by a negative number on your last step, you must flip the inequality symbol. Again, if you multiply or divide by a negative number on your last step, you must flip the inequality symbol. So what's my first step on solving? What would you say? What's my first step? Take away 5. To get rid of that 5, that's your first step. So are we multiplying and dividing by a negative? No. Is it our last step? No. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that rule. But we do have 2x is greater than negative 4. And that really means 2 times x is greater than negative 4. So I need to get rid of the 
two in front of the x. I need to get rid of the multiplication of two. How do I do that? Divide by two. So I'm going to do the opposite of multiplying, which is division. We do to one side, do to the other. That cancels out. And I have x all by itself. That's my goal of solving equations. That's my goal of solving inequalities. Uh, on the right side, negative four divided by two, that's a negative two. But the question is, does this inequality stay the same or does it flip? This is the rule that we need to memorize. If you multiply or divide by a negative number on your last step, so this is our last step right here. What am I dividing by? By two. Am I dividing by a negative number? No. So I am not going to flip the inequality symbol. Once again, if you multiply or divide by a negative number on your last step, you must flip the inequality symbol. Right here, we're dividing by positive two. We're not dividing by a negative. So the inequality is not going to change. It's going to stay exactly the way it was originally. So that's my answer. X is greater than negative two. You might be thinking, wait, there's a negative when I'm dividing. No, that's a negative four divided by a positive two. And the rule says, if you multiply or divide by a negative number on your last step, right here, we're dividing by a positive two. So that's why it doesn't flip. Whenever you multiply or divide by a negative, that's when it flips. That's when it changes. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, and of course, once you have your answer, everybody should be able to easily graph it. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have. Uh, yeah, you're not going to normally have a number line, so it's easier to just sketch it. Here's a number line. Put negative 2 in the middle. Put something greater on the right side, which would be a negative 1, because then you have to get to 0 before getting to the positives. And put a negative 3 and a negative 4 on the left side, because those are less values. This is... Uh, open dot because it doesn't have a solid line underneath it so open dot at negative two and greater than is to the right so there's your graph so i want you guys to practice solving one and two step inequalities by copying these down and i wrote the rule right here again for you just in case you forgot and by the way if you're like man i don't get this go ahead and write it down if you multiply or divide by a negative number on your last step you must flip the inequality symbol so this is a one-step equation, this is a one-step equation, this is a one-step equation. Uh, down here we have two-step equations. Go ahead and copy it down, I'm going to pause it, and then I'll explain it in a bit. So on this first example, it's a one-step equation. It says negative 4 times x. So to get rid of something, you do the opposite, the inverse operation. So to get rid of that multiplication of negative 4, you're going to divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4. And yes, we are dividing by a negative on our last step, right? This is our last step. We're dividing by a negative 4. So this does cancel out. We end up with x. We're going to flip the inequality symbol. It's going to become less than 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. x is less than negative 3. Okay. Again, it flipped. It changed because we divided by a negative. And if you multiply or divide by a negative number on your last step, you must flip the inequality symbol. So this next one, how do I get rid of the multiplication of 3 in front of the x? You divide by 3. Am I dividing by a negative? No, I'm dividing by 3. So am I going to flip the symbol? No, it's just going to stay the same. It's going to be x is greater than or equal to negative 5. That's your answer. Pretty easy, right? Uh, how about over here? How do I get x by itself? How do I solve? Subtract 5, subtract 5. And again, the rule says if you multiply or divide by a negative, am I multiplying or dividing by a negative? No, I'm just subtracting 5 or adding a negative 5. I'm not multiplying or dividing by anything. So my answer is not going to change. It's going to be x is less than or equal to, and negative 3 is your answer right there, because if you have $2 and you owe $5, you can't completely pay them off. You'll still owe $3. This one's a little more interesting, because x is on the right side of this inequality. I want to get x by itself. So I need to get rid of the 2 and the 11. What do I get rid of first? The 11. How do I get rid of a plus 11? Subtract 11. That's right. What you do to one side, do to the other side. Subtract 11. So 3 take away 11 is a negative 8. And the inequality, I didn't multiply or divide by a negative. It's not even my last step. So I'm just going to bring it down. Bring down the 2x. We almost have x by itself. All I need to do is get rid of the multiplication of 2 in front of the x. So what do I do? Divide by 2, divide by 2. This is my last step. Am I multiplying or dividing by a negative? No, I'm not. So I'm not going to change that symbol. It's going to stay exactly the same. I do have x by itself on this side. I do have a negative 4 on that side. And this is my answer, but 
that looks ugly, especially if I wanted to graph it. It's better because like when I read this, it says negative four is greater than X. And I don't want to talk about negative four. I want to talk about X. So I either read it backwards or just flip the whole thing. And that's what I want to do. I want to flip the whole thing. I want to put the X on the left side, the negative four on the right side, and then flip that inequality symbol. You just flip the whole thing. It's like if you cut it out of the paper and flip the entire thing, that would flip as well. And it does. If it opened up originally to the negative four, it has to continue opening up to the negative four. So this is your better answer down here. X is less than negative four. Last question. Uh, how do I get that X by itself? How do I solve? What do I do first? Anybody? You subtract five. That's right. Get rid of the five by subtracting five. And what you do to one side, do to the other side. Rewrite what you have. You have a negative 2x is less than negative 12. So I now have negative 2 times x. And of course, I don't want multiplication of negative 2. So I need to get rid of that. How do I get rid of it? There you go. Divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2. This is our last step. And we are dividing by a negative. So what does that mean in terms of the inequality? X is what? You flip it. You change it. X is greater than. And a negative divided by a negative is a positive. X is greater than 6. Yay? Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. All right. Now, in reality, we did two lessons in one. Okay? We're going to get a worksheet right now. You know what? Before the worksheet, let's do one more right here. Copy this one down. Actually, let's do this one and one more. And then we'll... I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm sorry. Just, just two more. This one and one more and that's it. Okay? Um... If you understand these next two, man, you're, you're good to go. So you want to get uh, X by itself, in this case, R by itself on one side. So what do we do first to get R by itself? You got to get rid of that negative 16 by doing the opposite of minus 16, which is adding 16. So plus 16, that'll get rid of the negative 16. What you do to one side, do to the other, plus 16. So you have 0 plus 16, which is 16. The inequality, it stays the same because you're not on your last step and you didn't multiply or divide by a negative. All you did was add 16. Bring down the minus 8r. And now it says negative 8 times r is greater than or equal to 16. You want to get rid of the multiplication of negative 8, divide by negative 8, divide by negative 8. And that will be r. And because we are dividing by a negative, you're going to flip the inequality symbol. It's going to become r is less than or equal to 16 divided by negative 8 is negative 2. There's your answer. And to graph this answer, um, just do a quick sketch of a number line. Put the negative 2 in the middle. A couple of values bigger than negative 2, like negative 1 and 0. On the right side, a couple of values smaller, like negative 3 and negative 4. This will be a solid dot because it has a solid line underneath my inequality. So you put a solid dot right there. And it is a less than symbol. Less than is to the left. And for the final one, I promise, this is it. Right here we have... Uh, inequality that has variables on both sides and there's many roads to the same place you might choose to do this differently than your partner uh, but the bottom line is you do not want x's on both sides whether it's an inequality or an equation you want x by itself on one side not on both sides so let's move one of them which one do you want to move the negative the nine, the nine or the six doesn't matter six okay so how could i get rid of a six x subtract six x that'll get rid of the whole entire six x and what you do to one side, do to the other side, you're, of course, you're going to subtract it with the 9x. So 9x take away 6x, that will be 3x's. Bring down the minus 11, bring down the greater than, bring down the minus and the 9. And now we're two steps away from finishing. We need to get rid of the minus 11 by adding 11. What you do to one side, do to the other side. Uh, we did not multiply or divide by a negative. It's not even the last step, so it stays the same. The inequality keeps coming down. Uh, negative 9 plus 11, that is 2. And we have 3x is greater than 2. The 3x came down, inequality came down. Nine, negative 9 plus 11 is 2. Right here it says 3 times x. To get rid of that multiplication of 3, you're going to divide by 3, divide by 3. That will cancel out. You're going to end up with x. Do I flip the symbol or keep it? Keep it greater than 2 thirds. This is your answer. Now, if they ask you to graph it, it's kind of a, so this is less than one, right? 
So it's between zero and one. And remember the top is, or the bottom is how many pieces you break it into and the top is uh, which part you're on. So you're gonna break the unit from zero to one, you're gonna break it into three equal pieces. So you're gonna try to break it into three equal pieces, maybe right here and right there. So this would be one third, this would be two thirds. And if you actually got to this one, that would be three thirds, which would be the one hole. So where's two thirds at? It's right here. And it's going to be an open dot because it doesn't have a solid line underneath it. So it's going to be an open dot at two thirds. So it's not on the one, it's right here. Not perfectly in the middle, but it's a little bit to the right. Open dot greater than is to the right. So there's, that's how you graph it. And if you understand that, dang, you understand anything on these next two sections. If we look at the first page of homework, today's, it's all one-step equations. And not only that, or inequalities, but not only that, um, nowhere on this worksheet are you ever going to divide by a negative and have to flip the inequality symbol. They start really basic on uh, this first worksheet, 5.1. The only thing about 5.1, like, I mean, look how easy it is. You just subtract 11, subtract 11. You have x, don't flip it because you didn't divide, divide by a negative. This is really a 5. x is greater than 5. Then all you have to do is match it over here. So open dot at 5 going to the right. There's an open dot at 5 going to the right. So number 1 belongs to C. C belongs to number 1. Simple as that. I'm going to give you the worksheet in a little bit. The only thing that's kind of challenging is uh, these word problems. But back in chapter 2 when we did these word problems, uh, all you had to do was remember that certain words mean certain things. Like product means multiply, quotient means divide, uh, increase by means add, decrease by means subtraction, more than means add, less than means subtraction, but with more than, there implies a switch. So if I say seven more than your age, you're not going to say seven plus your age. You're going to say your age plus seven. More than or less than imply a switch, okay? Also, actually, let me pass these up. I really like number 18, um, and let's work on this together. This is how you're going to do this. As you read, you're going to write. So when you see a number, well, that just means any number, I'm going to use a variable X. You could use N, you could use A, whatever letter you want. Uh, I say use X, especially on the quiz when you type it in, uh, use X. So a number plus two, that's really just going to be X plus two. Now, what does is at most mean? Hmm, is at most. See, that means less than or equal to. That, that sounds weird because most sounds like more. But is at most actually means less than or equal to. And you could think about like something real. Like if you said, uh, actually, I remember when I was a kid, uh, I wanted to jump into the pool of balls at Chuck E. Cheese, but there was no Chuck E. Cheese and there's not even a pool of balls anymore at Chuck E. Cheese. But I asked my parents, please take me to San Diego so I could go to the pool of balls inside Chuck E. Cheese restaurant. And they took me. And uh, when I got to the front of the line, the worker there was like, no, you could at most be 40 inches tall at most. And I was already taller than that. So at most means less than or equal to, right? So keep that in mind. There's more to that story, but I'll tell you that later because I'm recording this right now. Anyways, um, so right here, at most, that really means less than or equal to. Also, like at least would be greater than or equal to. At most is less than or equal to. At least is greater than or equal to. So uh, if you have to be at least 18 years of age to vote, what does that mean? You got to be 18 or bigger, 18 or older to vote, right? So that's where that, think about something real, that way it'll make sense. At most means less than or equal to. And then you put the one right there, and then you have an inequality that we could all solve, nice and easy, right? All you do is subtract two, subtract two, uh, x is less than or equal to negative one, and that's it, there's your answer. Again, back in unit two, when we solved equations, uh, when they say less than, that implies subtraction, but switch, switch the order, right? If I say like, what's one less than your age? You're not going to say one take away 14. You're going to say 14 take away one. The less than implies a switch in the order. So we do have subtraction going on, but the 20 is going to go on this side and a number is going to go on this side. So I'm going to put X on this side. And then it says, is at least, what does that mean? Is at least greater than or equal to. 
and 15. So it's that easy. This entire worksheet's easy. I want to give you the rest of the class to work on this worksheet. Uh, please check your answers on Google Classroom, and this video will be uploaded to Google Classroom later today.